frightened and very skittish. He's gotten so much better though. He will now go up and down stairs. He will walk on a leash, although he does sometimes require a tiny little tug to get him moving. Um, he will take treats from my hand. He will eat in front of me, which he didn't do when I, for, when we first got him. Um, he's, he's crate trained. He'll go into the crate and he'll wait there until you take him out. Um, he's mostly good with other dogs. Sometimes certain dogs will set him off, so we mm -hmm. would need probably someone very submissive. Um, but for the most part, he just ignores other dogs. But as a mill dog, it might be helpful to have another dog in the house so that he can kind of learn the proper way to be a dog. Um, so we might be looking for a house with another submissive dog. Um, but he's just, he's getting better every week. He really is. He's a sweet, sweet boy who just needs a lot of time and a lot of patience. A lot. And I think what we're seeing here is pretty, pretty much how, how he generally is. Um, does he bark at all? He will bark. Yes, he learned that. Lovely <laughs> habit. <laughs> he will bark if someone comes to the door or we back onto a bike path. So if he sees someone walking a dog back there, he will bark. Generally, though, he starts barking after the other dogs start barking. He follows suit. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how he is in the potty department. Now, I know when he came to you as a mill dog, he would not have been house trained, but I think you've got him on a pretty good track, don't you? We have him on a pretty good schedule, yes. Unfortunately, he does still have a few accidents every week, um, it, both both pee and poop, it doesn't seem to matter. Uh, I let him out every couple hours okay. and um, we go for walks and he will go out by himself. And first thing in the morning, he does his business um, by himself. But after that, you kind of need to be there with him or take him for a walk um, to get him to do his business. So um, it really, it's, we're still, it's still a work in progress, but sure. it has, it's gotten so much better as well. So it's just a matter of being patient and setting up a nice routine for him where he understands what he's supposed to do and when he's supposed to do it. Yep. Let's talk about the ideal kind of home for him. And I think we already talked about the fact that he could probably use another dog in his life. I think the, the instances he's had with other dogs thus far have been with males, um, I think he would probably be best suited to a home with maybe a female dog. Maybe, yeah. It's hard to tell. Yeah. He's he's so random with his... He he was getting in fights pretty frequently with the first dog because they were both males and had both recently been, been neutered. neutered. Correct. So that was explicable. But um, the he had one random incident with my current foster dog who is male and who is fairly submissive, and they haven't had an issue since. Great, great. So... They really just kind of ignore each other. Um, he he would do best in a home without children yes. or with older teenagers who understand that he just needs to be left alone. He Good. doesn't want affection. He doesn't want to be pet. He doesn't want to play. He just needs to be left alone to his own devices. Very kind um, of... Spe and I think somebody who has previous experience with a male dog would be absolutely ideal. And there's a lot of people out there who do like working with the male dogs. And there's a lot of satisfaction that comes with watching these guys blossom. Mm -hmm. 